everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. I am skipping the fancy introduction today because I have so much stuff to do. It is unreal. So I am just down here in my pajamas crafting away and saying goodbye to summer and hello to back to school. I can't believe I'm even saying that, but here we go. So we have a bunch of back to school crafts that I'm going to do tonight. I am getting us all ready to head back and we're going to be doing lots of teacher gifts. We're going to be doing things to get all the kiddos ready for school. And I have quite the to-do list. So for the first part of this video, we are going to start working on the beautiful back to school sign that mama has to have. So I've done a tutorial on this before. In fact, I have done one where, you know, the boards that the kids can hold on that say, um, you know, like what their name, age, obviously their teacher's name. Anyway, it's a more detailed sign, right? It's a more detailed back to school sign. Well, I have a tutorial on that and I'll place a link in the top right corner. But after doing that, those are super fun, but I really like the, just the simple ones and the simple small ones. They're just so quick, so easy each year to use. And I just love the simplicity of it. So I have been doing this for the past couple back to schools and I really like how it ends up looking. So another thing I'm going to do is you'll see I'm cutting out two here and it's not because I'm making two signs. Well, I kind of am in a way. I found these signs at Dollar General and I've only been one time ever to a Dollar General and it was on vacation actually when I stumbled upon one and had to go inside because I've heard such great things. So anyway, I found these chalkboards and they're double sided and I found them at Dollar General. I think they were around $5, but don't quote me. It, and in fact, it was probably about a year ago that I found them. And last year when it was back to school time, it took me forever to find and locate just a blank chalkboard to decorate. In fact, I think I had to, what did I do? I might've even kind of just made my own in a way, um, or used a black board and it just kind of, just kind of called it good. But anyway, I tell you that because if it's getting near back to school time in your area, then make sure you are looking for the chalkboards like yesterday because they go so quick. So I am making two signs, if you will, but the two signs are going to be first day and last day because if you're like me, you like to have consistency and I like to do a first day of pic school picture, last day of school picture, and I like my signs to match, but I always end up scrambling in June to try to match the sign super well or to take off, I usually take off the word first and then just re-crick it out the word last and put it in, you'll see in a minute. But this year I am getting so much smarter at this game and I am going to make the first and last day of school sign all in the same day, all in the same craft and we're just gonna get this done. So I'm gonna do the front and the back and I'm really gonna thank myself in June when, when this is done because my goodness, it's just a lot of work. Okay, so fonts will be linked down below. I love these fonts. They are so beautiful and I thought they looked really good together. So the top font that says, I think this one, is this the last? Yep. The font, um, the font that says my last day of is different than the font I used for pre-K. And I thought that they worked super well together. I really liked them. Okay, weeding out all of my middle pieces. The banner, I think it's called Triangle Banner, and that is simply a Cricut Design Space image. So just search Triangle Banner in Design Space, and there you go, it will pop right up. I love it. In fact, for last year's signs, I did the exact same banner because it just looks so cute on the signs. It's simple, but it adds some kind of fun, little exciting touch, I think. Okay, my last day of pre-K, I kind of did those backwards, but that's okay. And then let's do my first day of pre-K. I'll get this all weeded. And 
ready to put on these cute signs. Okay, whoops. Getting a little, little, little quick there. So how are you doing with back to school prep? If you are doing back to school prep or if you're doing back to school shopping, we did back to school shopping today. I thought I was super early in doing it, but we actually ended up having to order some of our school supplies because things like markers were already out of stock. Um, well, and, and ours were asking for like really specific, I'm making a mess of this. Um, ours were asking for really specific marker, well, Crayola, but like they wanted, you know, the eight count and stuff like that. So we didn't really have any room for getting something different, but I'm gonna have to come back for the little dot to my eye and do a little surgery on this R. So anyway, we had to order a couple things. I was amazed. Seems like every year it gets earlier and earlier. And I've spoken to this in terms of holidays on my channel before because I have to come back for that little dot to the eye. Um, you know, I really, I really like to live in the season I'm in. So you won't really see me, you know, doing holiday things on my channel long before it's time. Usually I will do them just in time. Um, it's just, I like to be present in the season I'm in. And I don't like doing fall stuff unless I'm having a pumpkin latte, right? But that being said, it seems like things are just getting earlier and earlier this year or every year and each year. So I'm kind of having to do things earlier and earlier because then everything's out of stock. And I really like that, you know, in-person experience with the kids for getting their school supplies. Okay, I gotta get this little dot to my eye. I got it right on my fingernail there. Let's see if I can get this put right back down there. Whoop. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. But in the end, grateful that we can get the things that we need, even if we have to order a few things. And I, it was only a couple things. We got most of what we needed. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these two apart. And this is probably a good time to mention that these little longer craft videos end up getting a little chatty. So if that's not your thing, I have shorter videos on my channel that get a little bit more to the point, but every once in a while, it's nice to slow down, get a bunch of things done, and chit chat a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna do the banner first. I just think that that is easier for me to put down. Now, one of my kiddos really likes blue, so I made her banner blue, but my other kiddo loves pink. So her banner is going to be pink. So let's go ahead and place this first one down. Now, what I wanna do is, I'm not gonna worry about rubbing alcohol because I just took these out of, uh, they were wrapped in like plastic wrap. So I know they're good and clean. I'm not too worried about it. But if you're worried, Go ahead and just prep your surface with rubbing alcohol so that it is nice and clean and ready to receive the vinyl. Okay, there we go. And pull that up. Okay, this banner, so cute. And then let's do in order just because why not? So let's do first day first. So earlier I was talking about how I would just kind of amend the sign at the end of the year. So what I would do and what I did last year is I would go through on my sign and I would take off the word first and then I would recut out on my Cricut the word last with the same font and then just stick it on there, which is perfectly fine. If you have a one-sided sign, 
perfectly fine and go ahead and just you know what I, you know what I would say to that is cut out have it cut out and ready to go or at least saved in design space so you're not having to re figure out measurements and all that good stuff but that's easy peasy however this year I decided I'm just gonna make it so easy on myself I'm getting better at this thing I'm getting better at this whole back to school business okay and then my first day of pre-k now making sure I can I think that looks good you can get a measuring tape out if you'd like but I think that is going to be just fine Ooh, there we go there we go and scrape that down and we'll do the exact same thing on the other side perfect okay lather rinse repeat turn it over we'll have it all ready to go now the challenge is going to be on that morning making sure that the sign is flipped in the right direction that would be just like me it would be just like me to just over prepare and make trying to make something easier and then accidentally have their first day of school picture say the last day <laughs> but you know what it's the memories right if you can't laugh at it and have fun but honestly I really do need to kind of make myself note that okay does that look good I think so maybe bring it down just a tad. okay final answer final answer and I think I need to actually weed out the center of one of my little ties over here okay let's get this off and then I think there's something here there we go okay although that's very skinny okay well is it skinny over here too sure is just teeny tiny okay and last day I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about that it's going to be the first day of school, let alone the last day. Oh. Days like these are just emotional, you know? They're just emotional. Cookies for breakfast for mommy, because she's probably crying in her coffee. Probably, not, not probably, she is going to be crying in her coffee. <laughs> bittersweet right okay and whoops slow and steady let's see oh I did okay burnish this last little piece down okay And last day. Be careful with your transfer tape. It really does want to cling. I like that. So you'll just want to be careful. Make sure that you are ready to go for when I lay it down. And there we are. It looks so good. Good. Okay, again, font information will be down in the description box below. That way, if you want to recreate this, you certainly can. I think that's so fun. First day and last day. So cute. Okay, and then here is the other one I did with that little pink look. And I think these look so fun. I just love them. I love them so much. And then I will... Um, end up just taking this final off and a year from now I will be making another one <laughs> with the year older I can't even uh, I don't want to talk about it this is going to be a very emotional video to make okay so let's go ahead and move on to the next craft okay so pencil boxes so fun I have all the things I need right inside I have everything pre-cut out and I just love to make the pencil boxes so cutesy cutesy for the kids 
and they always provide such a nice blank canvas. So what I'm going to do, I'm grabbing some, um, a paper towel. I'm going to use my rubbing alcohol spray bottle linked down below. And I'm going to just clean this surface because I believe I've had this since last summer. I had a just a bunch of them. They were at Michael's. I'll see if I can find them. If not, a pencil box is a pencil box is a pencil box. So um, I've had this for a while, so I want to make sure it's nice and clean and ready to receive my pretty vinyl. So what I wanted to do is I really just wanted to make this look so unique and fun. So I cut out, I well, first of all, I measured this inner rectangle here and then Cricut Design Space in their shapes area has now included some nice rounded shapes so I just clicked on the rounded rectangle and I put my dimensions in I did make them slightly smaller than even this beveled edge just because that's kind of the look that I love and I'm just going to make it look really fun I like the idea of just making their pencil box look super different um I don't know just it's just a, an opportunity to have fun right so I'm gonna get some transfer tape I have I've had excuse me this beautiful fun vinyl for such a long time and my girls are just going to love this so I'm gonna just decorate the top of their little box and of course we're going to also monogram okay so the transfer tape is on it looks good i have a monogram here because you know me i just have to i get so excited when the teachers say please send them to school with everything labeled i am like game on i love that <laughs> come on cricket we're gonna label all the things I'm in my happiest place when it's time to label all the things. Although sharpening all of the um, crayons, each individual crayon with their name, whew, I have to do that to my favorite show because that, that takes a lot. Okay, so, but when it comes to vinyling all the things, putting their names on all the things, my Cricut is busy. All right. Here we go. So let's see if I can get this lined up super well. Again, I did make it intentionally smaller than, whoop. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, it had to happen. I won't edit it out. I'll keep it in the video. Okay. Relatable moment. We've all done it. So I'm going to line that up where I think it should go and that looks good and then I'm going to be really mindful to lay this down without any bubbles and if so it's going to be okay but if we can have minimal bubbles then that's even better okay coming back through with my scraper really press that down little minor little guys in there but that's okay okay now I'm going to now I you can transfer tape and then transfer tape right so transfer tape pull it up off and then align and transfer tape I'll tell you why I don't when you go to hover over your piece well let's do this one first sometimes it clings up and I like to, when I'm lining up things, I like to line up on something that is stuck down. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Because when I, if I had this piece, this pink inside piece, if I had this on my transfer tape, when I go to line it up here, unless you like tape this down, which honestly is just too much work. Um, sometimes it's just hard to align it because this piece is just flimsy and wants to come and cling up. But 
this is not going to be flimsy and is not going to come and cling up off the table. Does that make sense? I hope, I hope it does. So I like to personally, you approach it any way you'd like. It's totally fine. Everybody does it differently, but I like to do, I like to build from the bottom up, if that makes sense. So that's just how I do it. Feel free to, to build yours differently. So what I did was, oh, see, it's my little Cricut doing its thing again. Okay, having problems with it cutting through just at certain times. It's kind of making me scratch my head a little bit. Okay, so I did do an offset. If you are new to offset, I have video, a video, a pretty big video on how to do offsets in Cricut Design Space, and it provides a lot of fun ideas for how you can use offsets. So I thought that this definitely called for an offset, and I'll tell you why. I didn't wanna just put my pink right on this background pink because I didn't think there was going to be enough contrast. So that little outline and or offset, it just, really makes it visually pop, if you will. I think it looks so nice. Okay, let's grab our pink. Now, another thing that I really love about this look, and you'll see in a moment, is the color with the white offset, no matter what color you choose, but it makes it kind of look like varsity letters. So it kind of looks fun and, you know, schoolish. I just, I don't know. You might disagree, but to me, when I when I see it like this, doesn't it kind of look like, I don't know, like a letterman's jacket with that, you know, color in the center and then the white offset surround, surrounding it? I just, I think it, it really does. So for me, I think that really not only makes it pop, but it also kind of is super fun for back to school. I like it. So there it is. There is the pencil box. What I love is that no one else is gonna have the same one. It's so personalized. Even if you just added a monogram, it's so personalized. But I love that you could just put some patterned vinyl on it and it looks like you bought it at the store. They're probably gonna ask, where did you find your unicorn pencil box? And it's just, I don't know, I love that it's personal to the kiddo. Okay. And then I also did a pink one and I love how this turned out as well. I think they are both so fun and cute and I think they're super unique. Okay. Let's move on to the next thing on my to-do list. I'm feeling better with each craft that is getting done because that means we are getting more and more prepared. Okay. Let's get going. Okay, switching gears here for just a moment. We are gonna focus on the teachers for the next two crafts. So I want to make them a teacher gift for the first, oh, you know what? I have three crafts for teachers tonight, but we'll do the next two for teachers, then we'll move on, and then we'll come back to an, another teacher gift. So something I really like to do is I like to have ready, prepared and ready, a gift for the teacher for the first week of school. And I like to send it on the Friday. So that last day, just kind of to celebrate that we've done the first week of school. Yay. Thank you so much because it's a big week, right? Everybody's, everybody's nervous. Everybody's, you know, learning the new routine and they're doing so much. So I like to remember as we're prepping for back to school, remember the teachers. So locating my rubbing alcohol, we are going to decorate and do a wrap around this Libby glass can canister. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up filling this with candy. But before that, I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol once again, preparing my surface. And I'm just going to go all the way around. And I found this super cute SVG. I'll link it down below in case you want to recreate this look as well. But I thought it would be really fun to wrap it with pencils. I thought it would be so cute. And then I'm probably gonna put like Hershey's Kisses or something cute inside. I think I'll do the silver Hershey Kisses because then the contrast against the pencils will be so cute. So I found that starting with, let's see, I'm gonna let me transfer tape this long. Hopefully this piece will fit. Oh, I might need a bigger piece. Okay. 
I'll have to cut some, but I found that starting with the pen, the pencil erasers was the best and easiest. And I'll tell you why the pencil erasers are the entire top and bottom of this piece, as you'll see later. So if you get those lined up, you're golden. Okay. So if you start somewhere else, then if you start with the actual pencil part, or the body of the pencil, then you're going to also have to do the wood, the tip, then the metal, then the um, eraser, and you're having to build out. So I just think that that's kind of hard to center, knowing that you're going to have to build out from there, if that makes sense. But this, these are the ends. These are the end pieces. So if you center these both here and here, you are good to go. So do it however you'd like, but I have thought, or I have found that starting with the pencil erasers is the best. Okay, so I have my transfer tape. Another tip, get a little piece of washi tape or regular tape, it doesn't need to be washi tape. Anything that you can do to place like a little indicator on your wrap. And this is going to, going to show you which piece i'm just going to grab this little piece of washi tape so i'm going to place this here okay and i'm just going to tape it right there that way it stays its entire project okay that's going to show you because i found that if you don't start in the same spot every time it kind of makes it hard to line up so when i move forward i am going to line up the second from the right with my washi tape each and every time. Okay. So I'm going to, I'll, you'll, you'll see it as it, as it plays out, but I found that, and I'm not, and I'm not sure if it needs to be that way, but I didn't one time cause I made a couple of these behind the scenes and I thought it wasn't lining up quite right. So, I added this to my workflow and it seemed to help. So we'll see. Okay. Let's get our first layer of transfer tape down. Okay, scrape, scrape, scrape. Scrape, scrape. And then in case this is the first time you're joining in, I like to scrape down the back as well because it helps just release, I think, the vinyl from the cutting sheet. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to, again, I'm gonna bring this down towards me. I'm gonna line up number two with my washi tape, okay? And then again, because my, my erasers are the top and bottom of my piece, as long as I get those lined up, I'm good to go. So I think that looks good. So I'm gonna wrap. Okay, and wrap. Okay, then I'm just gonna go through, honestly, you could just burnish it with your fingertips with these tiny pieces. There we go. Okay, and peel away. Oops, there we go. Okay, and I also should mention, I'm just peeling away this transfer tape. There is some wasted vinyl in this project. There, there just is. Um, because everything is lined up for you. So it, it yes wasted vinyl i know it it really does bother um but sometimes some projects just call for it and and that's okay you know if you don't like that i, I mean i don't know if you could really you'd have to do a lot of work in design space i think to like take all of these pieces apart and but for me, when I'm making multiple of these, it's it's okay for me to waste a little bit of vinyl in order for the project to turn out. Um, but I, I do realize that some people get very nervous with, with 
supplies being wasted. But I think, you know, some there are some projects that it it's just the nature of crafting sometimes, right? We and I always say it. I I save elsewhere so that at times when it's necessary or or uh, calls for it, then I can allow um just to be uh, allow it to be um a little wasted if that makes sense okay again i'm going with number two number two from the right lining that up and i'm just focusing on that one now there are little gaps in between with the design so you're going to have a little gap between your eraser and the and the um little metal part so then they should just all line up okay one two three four five six seven eight okay and I will, I will say some of this vinyl, especially this color and this color I have had in my craft room for at least a couple years. So that in that respect, it also kind of doesn't bother me to, to, you know, waste it because it, it kind of needed to go right. It needed to be used. So I was obviously proving to myself that pencil yellow and I don't know this kind of brownie beige are apparently not my go-to colors because I have had these rolls forever so I was okay with having a little bit wasted because I just need to use it at this point okay now let's see which way is this gonna go so I have to do number two number two okay Sometimes you have to figure out which way to, it's going to go. Okay. And lining up. And, oh. Hold on. It's only down. For some reason, I need to have this closer to myself. I feel like that is not quite lining up. Hold on. So, I mean, this lined up really great, but then this one I feel like is not lined up. So, okay. I'm gonna do some surgery because I do want these to look nice. Let's see if I can peel this up. I don't recommend this at home, but <laughs> I'm going to try. The other one was a little bit closer, so I'm going to let that go. But this one just seems really off. Okay. Surgery. Okay. Let's see if the others end up lining up nice. If not... I guess I'll just manually put them down. Yeah, so the first two did, and then the next one did not. Okay, so, you know, sometimes you get a method, and then... In I thought the washi tape was really going to help me out this time, but maybe I'm just going to have to do a couple at a time, and that's okay too. It seemed really, really off. I wonder if I did something wrong there. Okay, so I'm just kind of going one at a time there. How 
Oh, well, you know, you know what I always say? The right answer is what gets the project done. And makes you feel the most confident. So right now it's kind of independently laying those down. I wonder if I did something wrong there to make that not as flawless. Okay, but what matters is it's coming together and it's looking good. So cute. Okay, let me try, I'm gonna try my little trick still. Okay, we're going down to the little wood pieces. And you also could, you know, add their name. That would be kind of small, though. That's getting a little small with the vinyl letters. Not impossible, but I always tend to get a little nervous when it gets that small. But and that's another way you could run with this. Okay. So... Is it this way? Okay, I'm at number two. Okay, that lines up. That one kind of, yeah, it's not too bad. Ugh, and then they don't, okay. It must be just me, I'm not sure. Okay, no problem, I'm just gonna do two at a time. I'm gonna do one and two, because honestly, it's quicker for me to do it this way than to mess it up and then be frustrated. what's sad is this is the third one I've done and I kind of feel like I did all three of them kind of differently <laughs> oh goodness okay and finally pencil tips but I will tell you what I know for certain and it's that this cup cradle is definitely saving the day absolutely saving the day Okay. Peeling away. Being pretty careful here. The pencil tips are pretty fine. They're the smallest piece we have. I also did a tutorial last year. Was it last year? Um, might have been the year before, actually. Of, let's see, where's my washi tape? Not that it really matters at this point. Okay. Um, last time I did a cute pencil wreath cup. I'll link that too, because that turned out so cute. And I did the teacher's little monogram in the middle, but then it was like, it was like a wreath of pencils around it. Now those were tiny. Those were teeny, teeny, tiny, but it was really fun to do. That was an oldie. Oh my gosh. That was, I think that was my first, first year with my channel, which yes, let's see. Cause I think I'm on year two with my channel. So anyway, that was a fun one. Okay, almost done. Are you giggling at, at my little method here? I mean, whatever gets the job done at this point, right? And I just don't want it to be misaligned. That would drive me, that would drive me crazy. Okay, done. How cute. Okay, hopefully we can really appreciate. Oh, so cute. I love that. And 
I just told you this is the third one that I've done. Oops, I got a little bubble there. Um, let me try to get that out with my finger. This is the third one I've done, but it's still, like every time I finish one, the gasp is just still there. Okay, let's massage this little one out. Massage this bubble towards the center, edge. Okay, done. Gone. Love this. So cute. Okay, so again, candy on the inside. And let's do a teacher card. I love to do cards for the teachers. And then we'll go back to, let's see, I, then I want to make a shirt. I want to, I got to do the girls' snack containers. We got to monogram those. Then we're going to bring the button press out and do some things with that. And then I'm going to make some keychains. Okay, lots of things coming up, lots of things. Okay, let's do the cards real quick though. Those are gonna be super cute. Okay, so we're gonna put together a really fun shaker card. I did prep some of the pieces because I'm making these in bulk behind the scenes, but I really wanna talk for a second about making, uh, like mass producing a card. So when you need to make multiples of one card, be gentle with yourself and give yourself a lot of grace when designing it. So for me, I have done cards on my channel, which behind the scenes have taken me at least 90 minutes to put together. Um, I enjoy that. I think that's so fun. It's something that really relaxes me. I, it's not time wasted at all. I love spending my time and pouring my time into a little five and a half by four and a quarter card. However, when I have to make something in bulk, I am much more gentle with myself and realistic in that I can't do a card that takes so much when I need to do multiple. So I'm going to make an equally stunning card. This is super fun, an equally stunning card, but I designed it in a way that's going to be so much easier to mass produce. And I think it's gonna be really fun. The first thing that I did was pattern paper. When you need to do a bunch of cards, instead of ink blending and coloring, grab a pattern paper. You instantly get a variety of color. You get your wow factor and it's already done for you. You just need to trim it down. So I have trimmed this down to an A2 size and that is five and a half by four and a quarter. I also have my card base in 110 pound card stock over here. So we'll get that ready in a little bit. I'll link everything down below just as normal. And then I use this really cute Lawn Fawn Scripty Thanks die. I cut it out three times in 80 pound card stock, I believe. And I'm going to stack those together and we're gonna have fun just building a little bit of dimension here. I also have some really fun shaker fill and I love doing gold stars for teachers. In fact, I will link a shaker card that I made for the end of the year up in the top right corner where I made a coffee cup shaker card. So cute. It's probably one of the favorite cards I've ever done and I filled it with stars. I love the gold stars for teachers because it reminds me of the little gold stars and the foil stars that they at least used to give out. I don't know if they still do, but I just, oh my gosh, I lived for getting a gold star from my teachers. And then I have a, we're going to do a full panel shaker card. And so I have um, a panel here that's already ready to go, which this also, when you're mass producing, is going to be your best friend. So before we do anything else, I'm going to roll my card making craft cart over to my side here. And I'm going to get out my amazing little party swivel Thing. I don't even know. I need to give it a, a, a nicer name than that, but it's got all of my goodies. Okay. I'm going to grab, I'm going to use this barely art glue and I have been trying it out behind the scenes. I actually really like it. I have no complaints, but really quickly what I'm going to do, and you don't need a lot, but I'm just going to put some glue. Make sure I didn't clog it now. Um, on this die cut and we're going to stack it all up. Now, a precision tip, whoops, will be your, woo, Bethany, that's a little much, um, will be your absolute best friend for stacking die cuts, especially thin ones like this. So I'm just putting little dots all around and a little goes a long way. Okay, then I'm going to take one of them, stack it on up. And because it's a liquid glue, we have some time to 
shift and really line up and then press down. Okay, I just like to pinch and press. Okay, one is done. I'm gonna go ahead and do that one more time. Just adding glue, glue, glue. I know so many of you have been getting so many card making supplies and that just like fills my heart so much. It's so fun. It surprised me how much fun I'm having with it. I, again, I just spoke to it, but I really appreciate that you can get so creative on a little five and a half by four and a quarter canvas, if you will. You're given such a small space and you can just do so much. It's just so fun. And like my husband says, why buy a card for for four dollars when you can make it for 40 and that's the truth of the matter it's just the truth but he equally says I can absolutely see why cards cost so much money after seeing you know even and, and you know that there's probably I don't know I don't know it's it's just even the mass-produced cards that are so beautiful I mean so no wonder they're so expensive because there's just so much work put into them. Okay. So now we have our nice thick die or sentiment die. <laughs> uh, sentiment. Okay. So now I'm just going to let that settle. Let's build our shaker. This is going to be so easy. Now, what you need to do here, it's going to be this little 3M side up. So you're going to do the red side up and we're going to remove the protective film from the front. And I like to kind of grab my weeding tool and just snag that. And then, ooh la la, so pretty. Okay, then I'm gonna go face down. Nope. Making sure I didn't get any glue on my surface because that, that would not be uh, wise after just removing that pretty film. Okay, taking our pattern paper Again, trim to the A2 size, lining that up in here. Okay. Then peeling off all but one side of this double adhesive. And I like to go one by one. This just makes it easier. And then, oops, did I? Hold on. Whoops. It's gonna be okay. Press down. Okay. And then I'm just going to keep that nice and tight. Grab the next side. And fold over and press. And last side for now and fold over and press okay leaving this now this is super sticky adhesive so you don't even want to take this part off because it would just be a mess but now we have a little pocket if you will right a little opening so then you can take your fill and the fill is endless to so pick up whatever you'd like I'll link mine down below because it's just so pretty okay and put as much or as little, you be the judge. I think that looks really fun. And then when you have it filled to your heart's content, close. Okay. There we go. And then you have your shaker. Now you can put some anti-static powder inside so that you don't have the clinging. And I really thought about it, but I like that because I think it gives it like a, a variety. Everything's just not clumped at the bottom. I like that there's sparkle up on top, but if you wanted to remedy that and you don't like that, like when your fill is down here, that there's still stuff up here, you can use that anti-static powder and that may remedy that a little bit. But 
Again, I like that look. I think it's fun. I just think it's super cute. Okay, now I'm going to build my card base really quick before I build up my sentiment on my card. So I'm going to really quickly grab my score pal. And I have this trimmed to, hold on, let me do my math, five and a half by eight and a half. Is that right? Five and a half by eight and a half? Because then half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. And then you'll have an A2 size once it's folded. <laughs> I have to think about that sometimes. I know what I'm doing, but when I have to explain it, sometimes I have to think through. Okay, times that by two, divide that by two, blah, 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 blah. Okay. There we go. Now we have our little A2 size of five and a half by four and a quarter. And then. I need to grab, there we are, grab this. Okay, I'm going to attach my panel to my card base. You can use glue. My favorite thing to do when attaching a bulkier item is use um, this sticky thumb. I'll link it down below. I really like it. It is strong. And... I'm just going to go all the way around the perimeter and then kind of fill in the middle a little bit. Okay, then I like to just kind of do this. Okay. And done. Now the front is on my card. So cute. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I want to attach my, I guess I didn't need to put that away so quickly. I need to attach my little thanks. And I just wanted to keep this super simple, but stunning. And you could see how easy it is to mass produce, right? You can trim all of your pattern paper down. You can fold all of your card bases one by one real quick. You could um, fill them all at the same time, stack all your die cuts at the same time. I mean, if you do an assembly line like that, I feel like it's so much easier instead of building each one from top from beginning to end individually just line them all up do each one's step at the same time and you're good to go whoops okay grabbing some tweezers here real quick just because there's so much adhesive on the back here that i don't want to mess it up and then i liked doing a bottom right justify i thought that was really cute i'm just gonna lay that down and grab my little block here. How fun. I think it's cute. I like it. And so this will go with the cute little pencil glasses with chocolate, of course, because, because chocolate. And later on in the video, we'll make one more thing for the teachers. But I think for now, we will, let's see, I think we'll move on to iron on. I want to do some iron on. Okay, I got to make a cute shirt. There it is. How cute. What do you think? So simple, so easy. And it just makes for a really fun card. And then I, you can stamp the inside if you wanted to. I like to leave lots of room because kid writing is so big and bulky. And I like to have the kids do their own thank you cards. Um, and I just think it's really fun. What do you think? I think it's cute. Okay, so now let's start an iron-on project. And then we'll continue. Let's bring out the button press. We'll do some keychains and some fun things. So still a lot more to come up. All right, let's keep crafting. 
Okay, so I have this cute little shirt that I have been wanting to add something to, and I have a nice little scrap piece of iron on. I'll link this down below, I love it. And I recently did a video where I decorated my iPad sleeve with a really pretty kind of floral, well, a floral look, and it was really nice, really pretty, and I thought, I have to make that and use that SVG for one of my kiddos for a shirt because that's so fun. And I thought it'd be really neat to cut it out of this really nice rainbow HTV. I love it. And I also have this in adhesive vinyl as well. We've played around with this before on my channel. It's really pretty. But I'm gonna really quickly weed this out. I love it when you can take one SVG and be inspired with it in a couple different ways. I think that is one of the ways that you can make your craft purchases go a little further but I thought it was just beautiful. I thought it would lend well to a fun little shirt and I love making the kids a couple new things for back to school time. We actually just went back to school shopping. Well, the same trip really that we did the school supplies. We did a little back to school clothes shopping as well and found some cute things, but I can't resist actually getting or making a couple unique things for them as well. So I'll just go ahead and weed this out and then we'll press it on to the shirt. Oh my goodness, I looked over and just noticed that for some reason I stopped recording. I'm not sure what happened. I must have nudged the button or something at some point, but I'm glad I looked over because I would have just kept crafting along and you wouldn't have seen anything. So anyway, you missed the pressing part of this. I also wanted to mention that what I did was I placed it so that it went in rainbow order. So I liked the pinks and yellows, you know, Roy G. Biv, I liked it going from uh, in rainbow order from top to bottom. I think that looked really nice. I just pre-pressed the shirt and then I got all the moisture out, gave it a lint roll. Then I put it on, um, put on my iron on and I pressed it for 10 to 15 seconds at 305 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So it turned out really cute. Sorry that that little part of the video is lost, but also really thankful that I did notice that because now I am recording again and now I didn't lose multiple crafts within this video. So ooh, sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some, but we're not going to cry over it. Okay, so this shirt turned out so cute. I really love it. I think I got the shirt from Target. So cute, I love the little peplum look and I love the little rolled sleeves. So super cute. We're done with that one. I'm going to go ahead and move on to making some little notebooks for the girls. Then we're going to do some snack containers and grab the button press. Still lots and lots to do. So I've done this in a video before. In fact, I did it prepping for back to school. I love these and actually more importantly, my girls love these. I picked these up at Joanne quite a while ago. If I can find them, I'll link them. If not, um, you can probably find these just about anywhere. They're just kind of a little jewel sticker, if you will. And I love putting these on notebooks for the girls. I think they're so fun. And I found two really cute notebooks at Target. So we're gonna go ahead and decorate these once again. So my girls really aren't at the, that age where notebooks are part of the school supply list, but they love them for just doodling, coloring. So these might be more at home things, but I couldn't resist. Oh, that's gonna be gorgeous. I couldn't resist tucking this craft into this video because um, if you do have a kiddo that is asking for notebooks on their school supply list, then this is a little inspiration on how you can really quickly make something super fun. So you're just gonna peel this liner off. I asked the girls which ones they wanted and they wanted these cute, let's see, one is Cinderella. Oh my goodness, you guys, we just went, went to the library and we checked out a book that's called Seriously, Cinderella is So Annoying. Oh my goodness, if you haven't read that, it is so funny. It's told in, um, it's told by the stepmother and it's so funny. I don't know if you like things that are kind of like a different spin on the story, but it is so cute. We loved it. We laughed and laughed. We read it. Actually, we read it just about an hour ago and we 
thought it was so cute. Okay, so there is Cinderella. How cute. I liked it. So I knew the stickers I had before going shopping. And so I knew that I wanted a notebook that had more of the blues and purples in it because I thought it would be really fun with her dress. And then respectively, my other kiddo really loves pink. And so I thought that this was, first of all, really cute. In fact, I got the girls each notebook and then I bought duplicates for myself. So I have plain ones for just me. Maybe I'm probably going to put some vinyl on them eventually, but I had to get some for myself too, because mama loves a good notebook. And every year when it's back to school time, I have to buy myself school supplies as well. Is that just, I don't know. You know, I've actually said that before I've spoken this aloud and I am not the only person who does that. So let me know if you love back to school time or just kind of refreshing your own little office space with school supplies because that is where it's at. I just think it's so fun. Okay, so all that to say, mama got a new set of notebooks as well. Okay, we're gonna put Minnie Mouse down here and I really loved how you kind of brought out that pink of this notebook too. Those are really cute. Those are really cute. I love it. The girls are going to love this. You could further personalize with names or if you are doing this for school, you could do, you know, your subject, whether it's science, math, language arts, you could do that with adhesive vinyl as well. But these are adorable. I think they're fun. What do you think? I think they're fun. They're fun. simple. You saw that it took me, well, if I wasn't chit chatting with you, it'd probably have taken me 15 seconds to do the duo, but I think they're fun. I love them. The girls are going to love them even more. And there is just some fun and different inspiration for making a notebook just a little bit more fun for back to school. Okay. So pardon me if I am a little sniffly. I took a little break from filming this video and it's now the next day and I'm coming down with a cold. So uh, if I'm sniffly, sniffly, then you know why. And I apologize, but things happen. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the girls snack containers. And before I do that, I'm going to just spray them with rubbing alcohol. And I just have a little rubbing alcohol spray bottle here. I'll link it down below. And then I'm going to just wipe off the surface. Now, truth be told, these just came out of the dishwasher. We use them all the time. They have gone through, I think three or four back to schools and we love them and every year i just add a new little personalization to them and just make them nice and fresh so my weeding tool i am going to do a fun little offset and i'm also going to do a fun patterned vinyl whoopsie so that it just gives it some fun visual interest let's see here go and there now I did use the Cricut's new monogram builder to do this it was the first time I've ever used it and that is handy I will tell you I thought that was pretty cool and it makes real quick work out of it so that's nice and just making sure I got all of my pieces okay if you need did I, did I say this in this video yet sometimes when I take a break in between a video and let 24 hours go by between filming. Sometimes I forget what I did or did not say. And if I didn't mention it yet, I do have a tutorial on offset and how to use that really fun feature. And I give you lots of ideas for projects too. So be sure to check that out. If I haven't yet in this video, I'll link it up in the top corner for you because that is certainly a fun one. And then I am going to use a really fun patterned vinyl just to make this really visually interesting and fun. Now I really wanted to do the offset just so that there was some contrast. We'll see when we lay it down how that white offset layer just really makes it pop. And I think it just makes it look so good. I'll do my best to link this vinyl too. It is it is a fun one. I really like it. Okay. One more little one to weed and whoops. Come here. There we go. Okay. Tell me how you are with back to school time. If you love it, if you 
I don't know. I was a little bit more nervous as a, a little one, as a child. So I always felt that once July came and went, oops, I accidentally, I didn't want to put that one down first. Let me grab another piece of transfer tape. Um, once July started, I always felt like it's, you know, it was half of summer was gone and we were that much closer to start, starting school. And I don't know, I just didn't really like change. So it was really kind of hard for me to start school each year. I'm not sure. It was just the way I was, but, um, and it really was only kind of in the earlier, like elementary years. And then I really start like high school and college. Then I really, really started loving going back to school. It's just really fun, but I don't know. And now as an adult, I just love back to school time because like I said, I like to get, did I mention that yet? I like to get new school supplies. <laughs> it's way too fun. Okay. So again, I like to build it from the ground up. So I'm going to go ahead and do the offset layer first and lay that down. I think that looks really nice. Okay. Scrape down and Pull this transfer tape up. Maybe. Maybe not. There we go. I'll try my best to link these cute snack containers. We love them. In fact, I need to get a third one for my littlest because they are, they're perfect. They're perfect for the car. They're perfect for the snack that they pack for school. I just love them. So we tend to use them in the summertime as well even during non-school time. Okay, and then the offset. Ooh, see? See how the offset just really pops? I think that looks so cool. And I think it really just showcases and makes the, the pattern vinyl that much more vibrant just because it provides so much contrast. Okay, look at that. I love it. So cute. I think that is so sweet. I love it. And then these little containers are so awesome because you can put them in a variety of spots and do two little snacks in one. Oh, I love them. We've had them for so long, but I, they're one of my favorite things ever to get out of the dishwasher. Okay. So let's do this one with each craft I'm doing tonight. I'm feeling that much more prepared for the start of school. It's making me so, so happy. There seems to always be so much to prepare for, right? Okay. Sorry for the sniffling. My goodness. Oh, there we go. And peel up. And then I actually have another piece of transfer tape on the other one so we'll just move right on to that and I like to burnish the front and the back I just think it really helps peel up that carrier cutting sheet and then a line and stick super cute I love that they're coordinating but because of where you know, they cut on different parts of that really cool patterned vinyl. They're different, right? Which is so fun. So they coordinate, but they're, they're both, I don't know, different enough from one another. How sweet is that? I love it. So fun. Okay. Another to-do list done. Let's go ahead and move on to, I'm going to bring out the button press because I want to move on to teacher gifts and then I'm going to also make the kids some keychains for their backpacks. So let's do that next. Okay. Bringing in the button press. I'm going to take these attachments out real quick because we're going to need the white base in. Now we're going to make the teachers a really cute I want to make them the little paper clip um, attachment. It's my favorite attachment that there is. 
I'm going to go a little quicker through this little build here because I have an entire video on how to do the button press where I really slow down and go through it. Now I'll go through it, but if you really want to go in depth with all the things that this button press can create, because we're only going to use it for two things tonight, um, then check out that video. I'll place a little link up in the corner for you, or just go to my channel and type in button press and you'll find it. It's so fun. It's probably one of my favorite things that I have in my craft room right now. So, and that, that can always be changing because I feel like just when I have favorite things, then something else comes out and it just gets exciting all over again. Okay, so for this, we are going to have the little paper clip and this comes as a add-on, if you will, or an accessory kit. So I'll link the accessory kit and then everything that you see here. But the accessory kit will include the little button, the piece of mylar, which is sheer, so you can't see that very well, the paper clip and then the paper clip attachment, which will go on the back. So this all will coordinate with the smallest button press um, attachments. So that is the light pink. So to start out, we are going to put the white base and the white upper pressing field up into the button press, see? And now it's magnetic, so it just, it attaches right on there. And then I'm gonna grab some patterned paper and I am using the same pattern paper that I used to create the teacher's cards. I thought it would be really nice to have them coordinate and really fun. So I'm gonna use this little pink piece. Now, it looks like a little donut inside is going to show you wherever you put this, it's gonna show you a preview of what your button will look like. In this case, our little paper clip attachment. So I think it would look super cute. Now you can just kind of hover over and see where you'd like it. Which one does this go? Does it go this way? Um, let's see. I'm kind of thinking that looks really cute. I like the, so hard to see. I'm sorry. I like that it has the little pencil shaving, a pencil. It has a pen in there as well. I think it's super cute and I like the colors. So I'm going to go ahead and place my paper plus this die right into, right on top of the white base, swivel it in and then press down to cut. Okay. And then it should cut all the way out, which it did. Oops. One little part. Nope, it did. Okay, so now I am going to, that was user error. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to start building the button. So again, we're using the light pink piece. All of these pieces can go away. The white base plus the die can all be put away. And then you're gonna get the coordinating base and top piece that are in that blush because the blush is the size small, okay? And so then the top piece, we're gonna go ahead and just place in the top. Again, it's magnetic. And then the base will go in the bottom. But before I put the base in, I'm going to build my little sandwich. So I'm gonna put my button in. Okay. Then I'm going to put my paper. Then I'll put my mylar. and then I'm going to place it right in here. Now I'm gonna make sure that both my top and my base are on A. And I will, let's see, do I have that right? Yeah, okay, I'll hold that up. See how they're both on A? So there's an arrow and it's lined up with A and then there's an A lined up with the arrow. Okay, so I'm just going to press that down. And then the button will disappear from the bottom and be pulled up into the top piece. Then I'm gonna take my little back attachment. This is unique to the paper clip um, whole system. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that, put it right into my base here, switch it around to B and to B, put it in. Okay, now if I hold it up, you'll see that there's an arrow, B, B and arrow. And I'm just gonna make sure that it is all lined up, okay? And then press again. Okay, and then we should have our button, which we do. So then what I can do is here's the button, so cute. And I turn it around 
And then we have our little paper clip that just snaps right in. And there is our little paper clip attachment. Now I thought this was a super cute gift because I thought they could put on their little teacher planner it doesn't matter what they do with it as long as they love it. You could also just use it as a bookmark, whatever, whatever you'd like. But I thought these were super cute. So now I need to make, uh, no, a total of three. So I need to make two more really quickly. I wanted to also note that with one 12 by 12 sheet of this pattern paper, I'm going to be able to make all for uh, all three of my cards. So all three of my shaker cards, plus I'm going to be able to make all of my little paper clips. So you can really stretch your craft supplies. I think it's fun that they're all gonna coordinate and this is just such a cute idea. I love it. Plus based on the pattern paper you choose and I speak to this so much in my other video that it's all about the button press but based on the pattern paper you choose you could really personalize this for anything. So if you had a book club you could do something that was literature based, anything like that. I think it's so so fun. Okay, so I did end up making three. I love how they turned out. They are so cute. I just love them. Okay, let's move on to, well, because we have the button press out, I'm gonna grab a different attachment. So I'm gonna put the blush attachments away because we're gonna do keychains next and that calls for a different size base. So let's go ahead and do that while the button press is out and then we'll move on to another thing on my to-do list. Okay, I will do my best to link this princess paper pack down below. I am not sure why I grabbed these notebooks. Okay, I'm really getting sleepy. So we'll move those back to the side. Um, I will try to link this paper pack down below. It's so pretty there. It comes with a variety of princesses and it is double sided. So pretty. So you'll have a princess on one side and then the back side tends to be more of just kind of a pattern, if you will. They're so neat. And I've used these pieces of paper in my tutorials before and they're just a crowd pleaser for the little ones. So I've really used this time and time again. In fact, I made the kids magnetic bookmarks last year for back to the school with this pattern paper. Loved them. So cute. And so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to make, I grabbed another attachment. We're going to do some keychains. My girls love keychains and I think they're just such a fun way to dress up a backpack. So we really have fun with them. I've made them the little hand sanitizer pouch keychains, which still look so awesome. And then, um, let's see, what else have we done? I feel like I've done a lot of keychains. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and use this attachment. Now it does show you on the little um, pouch. See how this banner here is mint? It'll even say medium right there. So then you know so also if you turn it over and it, it actually shows the little mint attachment installed. So I grabbed my mint pieces. My other one is over here so that we are all ready to go. And then this comes with everything you need to make the keychains. And I think this is a pack of two. So we're gonna making two tonight and I'm just going to use this entire kit. Okay. Nothing thrills me more than using my craft supplies. So I am here for it. So we're going to need two pieces of Mylar and I'm just going to get everything organized. Two pieces of Mylar. We're going to need the, let's see, front of our button, front button, front button, and then back of the button, back of the button. And then these will not, ooh, I have an extra. Hmm, okay. And a little quality control, but you know, it worked in my favor this time. Okay, so um, the keychains, they will not interact with the button press at all. These, they have a little adhesive sleeve right here. We will use at the very end when we install the button into the keychain. So now what we're going to do is, my girls each picked out the princess that they wanted. So we have one who wants Belle. We have one who wants Cinderella. And this is gonna be so cute. And because we have this little die here, just like I showed you with the paper clips, we can very easily, you know, put them right in the middle and it's just perfect. Okay, so now 
what I will do, now I have to decide because there's one of Belle kind of looking away and then there's one of Belle holding the flower. I hate making decisions, but you know what? I love this one because I think, I think she would like Belle holding the flower. So I'm gonna trim this out. And then I'm also going to do this one at the same time because that means I can do all my die cutting at once, which is so helpful when you're doing multiples. Okay, and then we have one, these look so similar. They're actually just kind of her turned. So she's either turned this way or this way. Um, I think I'll just do this one because it's nice up at the top. Oh, no, 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 they're different. And there's this one too, where she's kind of looking off into the distance. That's cute too. Oh my goodness, I don't like making decisions. I really don't. I like this one. I'm gonna go with my gut instinct, and this was the first one. So, I'm just trimming around. That way we can fit it within the button press field. Okay, now, bringing in the button press, and we're going to start with our white base, because that does the die cutting. So we have the bottom, we have the top, the top is magnetic, so it just pulls right up on there. And then we're just going to align this wherever we'd like. I think that looks really nice. Place it, rotate it. Make sure it fits there. My paper just a tad too big. Okay, let me trim that down just a little bit more. Okay in there and press down real good okay so we can die cut and oh goodness I did it again this is totally me but it shows me where I can cut honestly if I wasn't filming I'd do this perfectly also I need to remind myself to slow down a little bit because I I get in a mode of achieve, 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 get it done, get it done, get it done. And then when I do that, it takes me longer, but I'm not going to edit this out. I don't, I don't want you to think I did this perfectly, but I know I can't be the only one who just starts kind of rushing to get something done, but then the long run kind of, it takes me longer. Okay. How does that look? because I'm having to fix my rushed mistakes. Also, to be fair, this is a very thick cardstock, so I need to put more muscle into it. Okay. And I'll even stand up. Okay, let's see. How'd I do? Oh, almost. I think it's really just me I don't have I don't have a lot of a lot of muscle <laughs> but you know what it does show you like a little area to you know it shows a pressing mark so then you can just cut it so it happens okay so now I'm going to put my base in but I'll build my little sandwich first so I'll put my top in and have it rotate to A, okay? And then let's do, we'll do um, Cinderella first. Okay, so we'll do button, whoop, button. We will do Cinderella and the Mylar. Place that in, make sure it's rotated to A. So I have both my top and my base both rotated to A, and then I will press down. Then it pulls it up into the top. I'll rotate these both to B now for the next part. And then I'm going to bring my little back piece in and I'm going to install it just like that. So there is another side that has like a lip on it and then there's this side. So this side is face up. So I'm gonna put that right in there. No, is that right? Let me think. Is that right? 
Or is it this side? I think it's the other way. Yes, I'm so sorry. It's this way. I had to think that through. This way face up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I promise I know what I'm doing. But we'll see in a second, right? Let's see if I'm right. Oh, she's so cute. Yes, I was right. Okay. There she is. Let's go ahead and press the other one in. So rotating both back to A, A. And we will do button. Oh, this cold's gonna get the best of me, I think. And bell, mylar. Go back in here, rotate to A, rotate to A. And then I'll show you there. See, arrow, A, A, arrow. So the A's are all lined up on the top and the base. Press down. And then magically disappears. Now, so I don't confuse you. There's this side and then there's this side that has like the lip. It's going to be lip side up. Lip side up. Okay. Here we go. Rotate to B. Rotate to B. And press. There we go. All done. So now we have both of our little buttons and they are flush on the back, allowing us to install them with this built in adhesive into the keychains. So I just like to use my weeding tool to grab that little film up. And then I like to make sure they're nice and straight. And then I'll just pop that right in. And how cute is she? She's gonna look cute on this backpack. Although this backpack, excuse my symbols, this backpack is a Elsa backpack. So we're gonna have some competing princesses going on on this backpack. And then lining it up and dropping in, press down. There we go. How sweet. I love them. They're so cute. So easy too. And you can just personalize away. You can do pictures, you can do monograms, anything your heart desires. Okay. So I'm going to put this away. We're going to do one more thing. I want to make the girls, well, I have to, you know, I have to, I'm going to have to make them some monogrammed keychains. Um, I made myself one for my beach tote this summer love it. And as soon as I saw how cute mine turned out, I knew I had to do some for the girls for their bags. So I'm going to go ahead and put this away and then we will get to making their cute, cute keychains. Okay. So for this project, we are going to bring out Babs and we're going to do a really fun in the hoop keychain. And again, I've done this on my channel before. They are so cute and they turn out so nice. So I like to do a white vinyl uh, faux leather on the front and then I like to do a fun pattern on the back. So what I have is I have a piece of white. This is my favorite faux leather ever, ever, ever. I stumbled upon it on accident on Amazon and now I buy it all the time and I keep it in stock because I use it for everything. I have made in the hoop chapstick holders. I did in the hoop san hand sanitizer holders. This is butter. It's amazing. And then I also picked a patterned piece. Now I'm going to do a blue for this second one. And I think it's going to turn out really cute. So again, the pattern will go on the back. Then later we'll bring in the little snap tabs to bring it all together. And then we have a little lobster clasp keychain as well that will attach it to the backpack. So I have those here. I'll link these. I found them on Amazon because I'm going to be doing um, they're going to be, you know, hanging with these. I want to match the hardware. So I'll just bring out the hardware I'm going to use. It comes with like a brush bronze, a gold, a rose gold, and a silver, I believe. But again, I'll link it so you can take a closer look at that yourself. Okay, so have those. 
that's all I need so far. I'm going to keep this out because I think sometimes it's helpful to see where it's going because sometimes it's kind of hard to visualize it in the hoop, but I'll leave it up here so that you can kind of watch. So I have my Mighty Hoop. I have it all installed with some heavy, um, this is tear away. Yes. And you can use cutaway or tear away for in the hoop projects. I like to use this tear away. In fact, I, um, have used both actually. So it's kind of whatever you have on hand, in my opinion, both work. And then again, um, so I just have that hooped and all we're going to do is hoop stabilizer only. Then embroidery tape will be your best friend, especially for in the hoop projects. So we're going to be attaching material to the front and then also to the back on the underside of the hoop. So you want to make sure you have some tape just to hold everything in the position. So the first thing we're going to do is run it over to the machine. It's going to do the placement stitch, which is going to show us exactly where we're going to lay down our first piece, which is this piece of faux leather. So let me go ahead, take it over to the machine. I have my design already placed on my USB and it's on my machine. I also have already traced out my design. So because my hoop that I'm using did not come with my machine, you always want to trace before stitching just to make sure that your design fits within your embroidery field and does not come near the edge of your hoop. That would be such a sad day. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna again do the placement stitch. Once the placement stitch shows me where it is on the stabilizer, then I can hold or place down exactly where and cover my placement stitch with my material. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so there is, oh, I should have used something not white, but I just use, it doesn't matter what thread you use, you can just use whatever's in your machine. So I just use whatever was in my machine last, but you can see it there. That is our placement stitch. So that is going to show us where the keychain is going to lie within our stitching field. So then based on where that is located, we want to put our first piece of faux leather. You're putting down whatever's going to be the front side. So in my case, the front side is the white, making sure I'm peeking under and making sure that it covers my entire um, placement stitch. And I cut my material much larger than the placement stitch area. I just like to have a lot just to make sure because I've gone a little short sometimes and it makes it a little nerve wracking. So I just like to do a little bit more than needed. You do you and do however you like it. Now I'm going to take it back and we're going to start. I think the next stitch is going to be the little scalloped edge. So we're going to do that. And I'm talking about the little satin stitch here. So I'm going to do that in a nice mint, just like this. And then I'll change my thread and we'll do the monogram next. So we're just going to let all of this stitch out. Okay, so it did the satin stitch scalloped edge and then it did the monogram and I did a really kind of bold teal. I thought that that would be super pretty. Again, her backpack is the frozen Elsa and Anna. I got it from Pottery Barn. She loved it. She picked it out. So I wanted to kind of make her keychain kind of to have those wintry, you know, how frozen is, right? It's just it kind of has those nice blues and I thought it would just coordinate so well. Okay, so there we go. I just had to snip a jump stitch really quickly. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the hoop over. We're gonna place our back piece. So in this case, I like to do a pattern. This will be whatever you want on the back side of your keychain. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down. Obviously, it's a very obvious where you need to place your piece. 
So there you go. And then I like to do additional adhesive on the back. And when I say that, I mean more than just the top and bottom. I like to go on each side only because this is the underside of the hoop. So it will be laying upside down when stitching. And I just don't want anything to flop over. It's just easier to over tape than to start over and mess it up. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the machine. And now what it's going to do is it's going to go around the entire perimeter. I'll show you on this one with that nice stitch. So I like to use white. I just think that looks so clean and polished. You can use whatever you'd like, but change or, um, you know, decide what thread color you want next. So it's going to go ahead and do that. And then it will do two small circles that will just kind of be guides for where we are going to place our snap tabs so that, or snaps so that we can make the little closure. Okay. So it's going to do those last two steps. And because it's doing the perimeter here, it is securing the front and the back of the keychain. And now we're having a whole dimensional item. It's so fun. Okay, we are all done. It has secured the front and the back together. It's a little hard to see because that's kind of busy, but you can see the outline there. So I am just going to simply snip my little tail there and we'll be all done. Okay, so now we unhoop. So I'm gonna take all this tape off and we'll be ready to cut it out and this is my favorite part it's just amazing to me that you can build something with an embroidery machine this this kind of this wasn't the initial reason i bought my embroidery machine but it was it's probably the reason why i have fallen in love with it over and over again okay so here is our item i like to personally tear my stabilizer up at the stitch line. You don't have to do that. You can just cut without tearing your stabilizer out. But I, I don't know. I like to do it, so I do it. And now we can take scissors. Now, I really don't think you need anything fancy. I just use my craft scissors and it has always worked really nice. But you are going to give yourself, you know, a generous little outline there. You don't want to get too close to your stitches. This is the part where it's personal preference. You can choose whichever, you know, shadow border you'd like. Somewhere, it's probably about an eighth of an inch, approximately. So I'm just going to trim this out. And then... We will install our snaps and we'll be all done. Okay. And done. Now you can keep this if you have some uses for it. And there is our little snap tab. So now we're going to install the snap so that we have a little closure. Now you can also do it this way if you like that look better, but I like having the patterned vinyl and that faux leather peek over and interact with the front side. I think that looks really neat. I think that really looks frozen themed, don't you? I just love those nice wintry cool tones. Okay, I'm gonna put this away as well. I'm gonna grab my snap press and my snaps. Okay, I'm gonna set this off to the side. I don't want it on my glass mat, but it's right here. It's just my nice big snap press, okay? So there she is. First thing I want to do is decide on my snaps. So, I'm thinking white. I do have some blues in here, but I just think it's gonna be too much. There's too much going on with the blues. And I like the blues as they are right now. So I'm gonna do white. And I don't, I don't know, would pink be cute? Maybe, you know, I did a heart on, I'm gonna do pink. 
because I like the heart. So I'm going to find all the pieces that I need. Okay, there we go. Oop, leave this, leave this out. I'm going to grab my little punch for punching my holes. I have the little adapter for that and that just looks like this. Okay, so I'm going to take my press and I'm going to take my base out, place, replace it with this base. It, whoop, hello, stay there. Okay, and then unscrew the top and replace it with the little punch. That's going to punch the hole. Now you could use an awl. That's completely fine. Okay, now I'm going to, I didn't point these out. Do you see the little holes? So the little, they're, they made little stitch circles here and that shows us exactly where we need to punch holes for the snaps. So I'm just gonna, I find that if I loosen mine a little bit, it punches better. Okay, you can hear it. Well, maybe you can't hear it on camera, but you'll be able to hear it personally when you're doing it. You can hear it punch out the hole. Okay done done so now we have our little holes and we can start taking our um, little snaps so I'm gonna do I want the heart here so let's do the heart first I'm gonna put the heart in and then either the male or the female side does not matter which side I'm so sorry for sniffling I'm going to take out my punch attachment and base and replace the snap press attachment and the coordinating base. This is all from camsnaps.com. I will just link their site and then you can browse and see which, which attachments you need for your project. So here is what that's going to look like. I'm going to place it this way into the machine and then press down and then that installs the snap. Okay. So now it looks like that. Okay. Now we're going to do the a flat side and the opposite end so that either the male or female, it doesn't matter which one you do first. doesn't matter which one you do second. It matters that they are opposite of one another. Okay, so circle side through the back and then front. So we have it looking like this. Okay, and press down. Done. So now we have a functioning snap. So now we just need our hardware. And that fits just perfectly. And there is our little snap. So easy, so cute. I love them. I just think they're so fun. And I like that the colors I chose, they coordinate with the backpacks that they chose. So I think that's gonna be so fun. Plus they're gonna look so cute. Let me close this before this all lands on my floor. That would not be fun today. Actually, that wouldn't be fun any day, right? But how cute. I love that. Oh, I just love it. It's just fun. Okay, they are ready to go. They are ready to go. Oh my gosh, okay. My favorite part of every video for two reasons. Because everything is done. Everything has been accomplished. Everything's been crossed off the list. And the other reason is because it just... It's fun to see all the things that I've done, right? And it's fun to see it all come together in the end because before this happens, it's lists upon lists upon lists and a very messy craft room. So not to say that it's not messy right now because I'm just kind of pushing everything out of the frame so that you 
don't see how chaotic it is behind the scenes, but we did everything. We did back to school signs front and back. So we are prepared for the first and last day of school. We are prepared to really spoil the teachers that first week. We have a cute thank you card. And then we also have these really fun Libby glasses with the little wrapped pencil design. Again, I'm gonna fill those with chocolate. That'll be super fun. And then a cute little coordinating, whoops, you stay there. A cute little coordinating paper clip for their teacher planner or whatnot. I love that. Plus again, this was so easy to make. So you could very, very easily mass produce these. Okay, we did pencil boxes. Ugh, they're so sweet. And I just love that they're unique to them. You know, I love it. And I love that I got to use some patterned adhesive vinyl that I've had in my craft room forever because I am all about emptying drawers this year. I'm shopping my craft space. I'm using what I have and I am just making sure that I am using the supplies I have before getting more. Okay. Snack containers again with some fun pattern vinyl that I've had on hand for quite a while. I really think that the offset really, really just wins tonight. Okay. Because I think it just makes the design that much stronger on both these pieces. I really like those. Fun, simple, so fun and simple, but these notebooks, I think they're so cute. These might be one of my favorite things that I did. And honestly, I didn't do much. I literally just applied an adhesive glittery sticker to these cute notebooks. They are so cute, so fun. And then of course we have fun keychains that are nice and coordinating. I love how those turned out and a fun shirt. I I think I have everything. There should be 10 things because I had 10 things on my to-do list and even more because I had to do multiples of some of the things, but oh my goodness, deep breaths. I'm so excited to have all this done. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you were inspired in one way or another. Even if you are not going back to school or preparing a little one to go back to school, maybe this inspired you with how you can style with the offset feature, how you can wrap a glass, even though that kind of got a little tricky for me. Um, but I think that, you know, whether you're sending someone back to school or not, sometimes these videos are so fun and can strike with some inspiration in one way or another. So I hope that was the case for you. Please Please be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching. Let me know what your favorite little craft was and I will see you in the next video.